And now, it's the various vortices of Xylan Roberts, a bi-weekly podcast where I discuss politics and conspiracy theories using a mixture of comedy, drama, music, and discussion. I... Yo, cut the fucking Count Fagula Vincent Price shit, dude. Shit's gay as fuck. It's me, Duck Bill Hickok. Everyone's favorite interdimensional platypus, Hillbilly Hybrid. Ah, uh, hey, Bill. What the fuck are you up to, you slack-jawed fudge packer? Ah, uh, not much, motherfucker. Not much. I've been wanting to ask you something. What the hell kind of name is Zylan Roberts, anyway? Sounds like one of those chain chong ding dong Asian extraterrestrial names. Like Shaolin, the ancient practice of sucking your balls up for your urethra while levitating three feet above the floor. But you wouldn't know anything about such things, would you, Shaolin? Uh, well, not exactly, I. Shaolin Roberts. That's my new nickname for you, Shaolin Roberts. Shut your trap, you red knock biatch. I'll have you know I got this name off the back of a fucking shampoo bottle when I was 15. I thought it had a nice sci-fi ring to it. Ring? You mean like a cock ring or that movie The Ring? And another thing, you did not just call me a bitch. Them's fighting words where I come from. Where do you come from? The inside of a black baboon's ass? No, actually. My mom. Oh, sorry, I went into a little Irish accent there for a second. Uh, hold on. My mom was an Andromedan child of light, and my daddy was a North Carolina born and raised good old boy. So you can't fuck with that shit, my nigga. The South will rise again. You know what I'm saying? But truth be told, I used to get bullied a lot for my traditional Andromedan religion, though. You don't even know, Shaolin Roberts. You don't even know. Uh, me so sorry, Bill. I had no idea. My tiny Asian penis must have retired up into my body and gave me a brain stroke. I will try to be more sensitive to your cultural traditions in the future. Uh, me so sorry. Now nah, fuck that shit, Shaolin. Fuck cultural sensitivity. Hell, my mama was a dirty sunburst hippie. But I loved her. Brighter than hell, though. I mean, both bright as in smart and bright as in it hurt to look at her because her body was basically a fucking fluorescent bulb. How the hell my dad made love to her, I have no fucking idea. I'd be afraid I'd burn my dick clear off. Like singed completely off. Seriously, it's fucked up how bright this bitch was, my mama. I don't know, we all have a lot of weird supernatural abilities, like psychic powers and pyrotechnical shit and whatnot. So maybe she could do some cocoon type shit and make love via scalar waves without without even touching. Like she could just think of fucking my dad and his penis would get microwaved like cooking up a hot dog. Yeah, I really don't want to think about your mom and dad fucking man, I I could do without that. I mean, me neither, man. I mean, I never thought I'd be talking about this shit, but here we are. All right, all right, it's okay, man. Uh, well, I'm just gonna get back to the introductions. Sounds good, (laughs) S.C.? No problem, S.C. No Kiro Taco Bell. Remember the Chihuahua faggot from those Taco Bell commercials, Shaolin? (laughs) Yeah, that dog was a little faggot for sure. But I liked his little Mexican mustache. I bet there's a hawk thing going on with that dog, though. Like he turns into Arnold Schwarzenegger and bites your balls off if you fuck with him. Like, Ukiru Takel Hell Essay. You come to the Ron Chimichanga Siesta Essay. Don't you know I'm loco? Don't you know I'm loco? Ah, Hell's Bells, you did not just drop a Cypress Hill reference. Fuck me, I love that song. Insane in the membrane. Cause I insane, got no brain! That's a pretty good impression, Bill. I can pretty much do the exact same impression. Check it, my nigga. Insane in the membrane. Cause I insane, got no brain! Well, hell yeah, boy. That's what's up. It's almost as if we were the exact same person. And one more thing. Live from an off-grid farmhouse in rural West Virginia. It's the various fantasies of Zoe Roberts. She. Yes, thank you, thank you. No, really, I really do appreciate the synthetic and or sampled claps and laughter. You're all too kind.
Yes, yes, I'm back after a three or four month hiatus for health reasons. Fibromyalgia and gastrointestinal bullshit was kicking my ass for a few months, but I'm happy to say that I have it under control once again. Yeah, for a month or two, it felt like my voice was being butt-fucked by a leprechaun with cerebral palsy. But my throat is 100% better now. Yeah, I kicked that little leprechaun in the balls! Ha ha ha! Yeah! Cerebral palsy? More like cerebral ballsy! Ha ha ha! Shit! Leprechaun? More like leprechaun artist! Get the fuck out of here, con man! Go do a company song with Conway Twitty, you cunt! Ah, but anyway, introductions aside, I want to level with you tight and proper, my niggas, my faggots. We got a good show for you tonight. It's 4th of July weekend, motherfuckers! Make some noise! Take that, communist China! Oh, me so sorry. Me fucked my citizens up the ass long time of social credit system designed to keep people in line and encourage conformity. I like to smear General Sal's chicken sauce all over Hong Kong's independence and ram their peaceful protesters up the butthole with Che Guevara themed strap ons. Oh, me so sorry. Oh, me so sorry. Nah, seriously, China. Get your fucking shit together. Why can't you be more like Japan with all their dope-ass technological innovations and indie music? I mean, the 1999 debut album from Cornelius, that shit is fly as flies on shit, motherfuck! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> yeah! But uh, anyway, let's get back to the show. Um, first, I'm gonna drop an exclusive X as in Zylin, X as in mock that spot in the couch. Cause this shit is gonna blow your brains out with a cock shaped laser gun, biatch. Like no shit, you might get skull fucked. <laughs> you know, like a Jeff Rock Fury. Yeah, I got an exclusive debut of a newest song called Two Trains, Two Wolves. But in all seriousness, Yo, sample synthetic laugh track, shut your goddamn ass up. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. You know, like the uh, fucking Pulp Fiction. But anyway, uh, but in all seriousness, Two Trains, Two Wolves is gonna be the first track off one of my next albums, Reveal the Pattern. It's a drum and bass influenced bit of electronic rock. I don't wanna give away too much about the song's meaning, I'll just let you guys listen and decide for yourselves. Alright, sound good? Okay. And next after that, Jaffe Ryder from Pirate Radio Network is in the house. Hey, MAT! He's gonna disembowel ya with a rusted hook if you give him the stinker! With one of your class size, you faggots! You better make some fucking noise, my boy Jaffe! <laughs> he runs one of the freshest, dopest podcasts on Minds.com, where they mix news, interviews, musical showcases, and more all together. So me and him are gonna have a chit chat. Maybe even a little mm, mm, church chat. <laughs> yeah. You guys remember that shit? Dana Carvey? Yeah, yeah, pretty fly. Alright, um, and finally, up on the program tonight, I'm gonna drop another bone track. Bones right in your face like a dick. Bone track to finish off the evening. I don't know what it is yet, so let's just keep it like a secret. You know, like the Bill Spill album. And I don't mean, uh, spilling your jism on the floor like a hose face. <laughs> ah, shit, we have fun, don't we? Alright. And now, without further ado, let's get ready to... Rumba, also known as Ballroom Rumba, is a genre of ballroom music and dance that appeared in the East Coast of the United States during the 1930s. It combined American big band music with Afro-Cuban rhythms, primarily the song Cubano, but also...
All right, uh, and this is a uh, various vortices of Zion Roberts uh, back at the podcast after a uh, three or four month hiatus for health reasons and stuff like that. And um, today on the show was my first interview, and we have uh, Jaffe Ryder with uh, Pirate Radio Network. And uh, why, why don't you say hi? <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Great to be here. Thanks for the invite, Zylan. Yep, no problem. Um, so, so why don't you tell uh, tell everyone a little bit about you know yourself and uh, Pirate Radio Network? Uh, Canadian expat living in South Korea the past, I guess it's 17 years now. First uh, touchdown in July 2002. Been back a couple of times to Canada, but not since 2007. Living a life of a kind of de facto political prisoner, really, just given the, the situation with customs and the border the way that they tend to be so overly intrusive. That's a big problem in my mind, so I'm voting with my feet, and uh, there's a good chance I won't ever be traveling internationally again until things change on that front. But uh, uh, other than that, you know, without getting you know, too sidetracked with that whole business, uh, yeah, working here as a professional elf, actually, the past 17 years, and uh, have been doing a little street busking as of late, actually, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah, just it's it's something that I just figured I might as well give it. You play you, know, you, you play music? Shot. Yeah, a little street busking with guitar, harmonica, huh. that cool. sort of thing, and it's tough, you know, with the Korean audience yeah. because and and my you know it's my age in particular, we're 50 years old now, and. To connect with your audience is not always easy, but it's a challenge and it's fun, and uh, you know it's, it's rewarding. I think for myself and for the audience as well too. When you do kind of manage to break on through and, and connect with them, and I've only been out a couple of times now the past few weeks, really. So that's that's been a real blast. And uh, you know, I'm just the guy who likes to kick back. I do have the show, as you talked about, it's the Pi Radio Podcast, the flagship to the wider WPRPM network people should check out the website of course wprpn.com and you can sign up for free uh and there's other there's other ways of, of getting involved as well too you can you can pay to have your own kind of uh really kind of prestigious a more prestigious i suppose web space basically with blogging ability and, and place to put your social media links and and everything else but as you know, Zylan, I think we talked about this before, that as a former guest yourself, you now have qualified for complimentary subdomain link. So WPRPN.com forward slash Zylan Roberts. How about that? So yeah. I don't know what else you want me to say as far as an intro is concerned. We're always leave it at that. I suppose we got two cats, the wife and I here, of course. A lot of kids, but you know, those are the those, there's there are students. That's how we you know people ask if we have kids. Yeah, we got a lot of them there, you know. They're, uh, but, <laughs> what you call students, so yeah. um, I don't know what else to say. Though. So they're not, so they're not your biological kids. They're like students. Uh, does your wife teach uh, teach school or something? Yeah, we both. I, like I said, I'm professional elf, English language facilitator. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know what you meant by that. <laughs> I know you meant oh, that. Oh, most, most people don't. Even Art Bell, I once had the chance to call into him and talk to him before he, before he kicked the bucket there. So uh, that was a blast. And, That's cool. Uh, yeah, sure. It's, you know, do, there's... Do, well, this is an aside. Do you remember that one time? Uh -huh. you remember that one time on Art Bell when um, that one guy called in, like, real frantic and, like, nervous, and he said that, like... Yeah, something bullshit. That, that famous one, yeah. Yeah, about so like, it, was, it was a great, it was a great uh, a kind of, I don't know what you call it, social engineering. Some people might refer to it as that. It's not my idea of social engineering exactly, or phone freaking kind of, I guess. Just, he's just pranking. He's kind of trolling Art Bell and did a great job. Sure. It's like, yeah, Area 51, they're after me. And uh, they, they've got like they're a, a tracker on being traced. <laughs> they've got a, you know, they're. Yeah. Well, supposedly, like, supposedly, but there's like, Conflicting uh, theories out there like like suppose there's one theory going around that said that the guy who came out as a Who said it was a troll was just a cover 
and that they quickly whip they, they quickly whip that up because it was an actual caller and it didn't it didn't seem like he was talking necessarily about aliens he said something about like interdimensional beings or something I don't know it's hard to say but yeah that's, that's well, one theory my know. money my money right now is on the fact that he was just goofing around and uh, as I like to often put it pulling art's wooden leg you know like we yeah. pirates it's always the question of whether you manage to pull somebody's wooden leg or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, you, yeah. If, that, if that's a success, then things are good. Yeah, I, 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 want, I wonder where that, that, that saying ever came from, pulling your leg. Do you know where that, that phrase that originated? It started as pirate ships. And oh, it what, actually was it? somebody. Is that where it came? Yeah, yeah well, right. the amputation process, gangrene setting in and having to, you know, the bone saw, the hacksaw, and. and uh, Remove, remove the leg. So you you, you pull it off. There's <clears throat> bone left there and sinew, and it's, it's a pretty gory scene as one can imagine. But yeah. you uh, you fasten up with the with the wooden peg, and and you manage to yeah, they're successfully perform the operation and pull their pull their leg, and now it's a wooden yeah. one. So <laughs> pirate ship. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I know a lot of the other sayings like walk the plank, and is that where that saying swimming with the sharks came from too? Or is that something else? Doesn't I would imagine. Matter. There wasn't too much plank yeah. walking, though, really, in uh, I think, in a historical context. I don't know how that came about, but fact of the matter is that there just there just was not a lot of that sort of thing taking place. It was, it's a f false uh, belief that's worked its way into pop culture. And even the way pirates talk, uh, Robert Newton, I believe, was the name of the old actor there. You've seen in the, if you ever watched the old Blackbeard movies with Disney and so forth, that, yeah. you know, the way he talked, the old sea dog, all grizzled and rough around the edges. <laughs> Army Hardy, right. like that, that whole business. Like, uh, uh, like a Tom Waits or something. It came from the actor, Robert Newton himself made it. He kind of felt that it suited his character and just took it from there. That's my. That's what I've heard, at least. So, and as far as as far as the business of the Area 51 caller as it was, I, I, if, if I think that's how it was, was was stated essentially. What you know, the, what you're talking about there, where he called in all frantic, and uh, that I, I, you'd have to track it down, I guess. But I heard. Back in the day, I can vaguely remember that they kind of blew the lid off of things and just, there was a guy he ended up confessing or there was somebody who was talking that was actually a friend of the guy saying, yeah, man, that's a friend of mine. He's a total, just a, just a con man, basically having a little bit of fun with art and his listeners. So yeah. you could imagine that show too. There were a few like Mel's Hole. I'm not sure if you remember that one or not, but what a classic story. Uh, the, the hole that just went down forever, the bottomless pit kind of deal. And I was totally roped in and intrigued by that that story, absolutely. So, but I think that's another one where if you go and really try to substantiate, look around for it and find it, that you discover that it just simply did not exist. There was something that was totally, you know, made up, of course. And uh, I don't know. It, well, it's a, it's a classic art bell. Well, I don't know about uh, bottomless holes, but I was I was just watching this uh, this girl on YouTube uh, who has a, who has a channel called Paranormal Scholar. I don't know if you know ever ever heard of her, but she did one video on like um, supposedly six or seven different spots in in the world that are supposed to be like gateways to hell or something like portals like. Uh, I don't know, just entrance ways to like hell or something. I don't know why the hell you'd want to <laughs> find such a thing, but but uh, yeah, that was pretty interesting. Apparently, there's one like in uh, France or something that dates back to like uh, medieval times. Like this monk was saying that he taught. This monk was saying that he got a vision from Jesus and. Uh, and uh, it and it led him to some cave that to where people can go in and, and there's like a portal to like purgatory or something. I don't know. It's pretty interesting. I guess I'll have to drop a link to that now that I've mentioned it. I'll have to drop a link to that uh, paranormal scholar. Uh, video. Well, 
The Ninth Gate. Have you heard that or, or seen the movie with yeah, Johnny Depp? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. Uh, well, just and think about it. Anyone that is into the occult in a big way, they would be, I guess, wanting to look around for these sort of things. Uh, yeah. Aleister Crowley. I think that's one yeah. of the things he was all about with his magic rituals and magic circles that uh, supposedly opening up portals to different dimensions and drawing forth summoning demons or entities of various sorts and uh, well, well, it's not well, the sort of thing that I'm into but I, like I'll yeah. read about it but I won't actually practice it in that oh sense. I mean yeah yeah fuck that I mean no 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 way I, I wouldn't practice that shit either because it's just like you never know what the hell you're gonna get with that stuff anyway so it's just best to like stay away from that stuff in my opinion but uh, stay away from like magic in general but uh, but uh, but I mean, I, I in, in general like I'm I'm interested in like researching anything of a paranormal or a, you know mysterious nature or conspiracy or any of that stuff. So I'm pretty knowledgeable about a lot of that stuff. And I was gonna say something else, but uh, oh yeah, uh, Ninth Gate. That's funny. That, that's funny you should mention that because Johnny Depp was also in <laughs> a movie that uh, you may or may not like. Uh, because maybe they misrepresent pirate culture, Pirates of the Caribbean. Six, six degrees of. Uh, yeah, degrees sure. Of there you go. That's right. Yeah, uh, I mean, and he's quite a character too. Just the way that he, the money that that guy has spent, you know, is incredible, and his carousing with. Uh, I wonder where the friendship, the romance with Keith Richards stands at the moment. Who, who's really to say? But apparently, really having to deal with some major financial problems at, uh, at Keith, the moment. Keith so, Richards. come again? Keith Richards? No, Johnny Depp, man, because of uh. his, his manager, his family helping to manage his finances, and and so on and so forth. And his his, his exorbitant. Uh, extreme lifestyle and the, the, the divorce with Amber Heard, I believe her name was, and he's just the kind of guy who, to him, money means very little. It seems, but maybe it, you know it will. I guess if things get to the point where he finds his his uh, his bank accounts have been totally cleaned out. So yeah. uh, uh, at the same time, you know, I I like I enjoy his acting ability and there's stories of him wearing an earpiece actually on the set to Pirates of the Caribbean so people can make of that what they want. There's been once again as conflicting reports as to whether that's that's reality or not. So uh but uh on top of that I think he's done some decent charity work along the way too so that's always important uh, and great to see where he dresses up, gets you know in character and heads out to different hospitals and various places around the world wherever he happens to find himself and visits kids in the in the, the cancer ward or wherever they happen to be uh, you know sick and, and having to <clears throat> to stay at any particular time so I really don't know what, uh, what more to say but it's I haven't actually seen all the movies I'm trying to take in as many as I can but I'm always willing and open to going back and revisiting and uh, watching anything that people recommend to happen to come my way. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, well, going on that, uh, I <clears throat> there's, there's one kind of thing that was kind of on my mind. I made a uh, I made a little uh, minds post about it. You remember that show uh, Eastbound and Down? Did you ever watch that show? Uh, just trying to think now. I re refresh my memory. It's like it's it's like from like the late two thousands, early two thousand tens. It's like where Dan Danny Mc Danny McBride. It's just kind of a silly comedy show, but Danny McBride plays this like obnoxious like ex kind of like a has been baseball player, but. But there's a lot of like surreal elements, and he's trying to get back his career and stuff. I'm not really into like sports stuff, but but it's it's pretty funny because there's a lot of like politically incorrect humor that you couldn't get away with today. And and kind of watching it, you're kind of surprised like how they got away with like they say faggots a lot, and 
you know, and make a whole lot of like, you know, uh, racial jokes. Even though sure. I don't, th- I don't think they're like racist or anything, but like, there's just a lot of like, you know, sort of racist humor, just kind of like ironic or whatever. And uh, I don't know, I, I just kind of thought that like, you you can't do a show like that anymore. You know, if, if if that kind of show came out today, like it would have been, it'll be like attacked and critiqued off the off the airwaves. You know what I mean? Uh, speaking of uh, entertainment, because you were talking about stuff that to recommend or whatever. How about the Man Show? Remember that one, Adam Carolla? Yeah, and... yeah, that, that that's an old one. That's like early two thousands, wasn't it? But, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, hell, I'll go back and watch something from the like, 50s if I feel like Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I know. I, I know. So. I'm, just, I'm just saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's another But uh, Jimmy Kimmel, what, uh, I mean, what kind of a turn did he take? Yeah, because... yeah he, he's, he way sold out. He went from the man show to being a complete chill. Basically. To the wuss, to the wuss show. <laughs> or this the Holly yeah. weird, Holly weird kind of, uh, yeah, totally PC wuss yeah. show. So... That's uh, that's too bad. Adam Carolla is still pretty cool, though. I think he hasn't really. I mean, he's done well for himself in his career. He's a really funny guy, and a great, well, I think real he, mind com- I think, comically. So, well, I think he kind of like re- retired from being in, in front of the cameras, and he's kind of like does like behind the scenes shit now. He's like a producer and things like that. I, I don't know. What he's a he, podcaster. He's got he a po- regular podcast on the go. You, oh, haven't, ch- you he? haven't heard it or seen it or uh, checked it out? I, I mean, oh. I, knew, I knew he was up doing something, but I didn't know what. I mean, I mean, I, I, I'd seen him like make some comments and stuff like that. Like, I guess he's kind of like pro-Trump or he's like against political correctness or something, but I, I didn't know what he was up to because he, he kind of like stays out of the spot. I mean, he stays off TV and shit like that. I don't think I don't think he's into like you know being in front of the cameras anymore. But I guess he has that podcast. But I have I've listened to it. Is it good? Is the podcast good? Yeah, yeah, I think it's called the Adam Corolla Show. You can easily find it. Just type type it into like a Duck Duck Go search. And I've been listening to a lot of uh, Love Line, where I walk around and like heading off to work and stuff, and and uh, that sort of thing. So I got my MP3 player plugged in the little earphones and the whatnot and yeah love line man what a great show this is going back to the 2000s i'll go through all the archives it's art bell the phil hendry show there's another one for you which i don't know if you you or your listeners have heard about but oh god there's some really great stuff that he's done over the years not lately unfortunately i would say because he doesn't take the live callers anymore um uh, Phil Hendry, I, he would just, uh, I, have you, does the name ring a bell? Uh, no, I'm not familiar with him. What's he doing? Man, dude, I'm going to have to send you a link. Uh, we got some archives, some of his material archived, it's like uploaded online and okay. give you a chance to <clears throat> sample some of what he's got, but uh, it's just a show, it's a, it's a kind of offbeat, different style type radio show where you're almost guaranteed to get a few laughs and uh he's you know it's interesting too because him as an individual i really am not on board with his politics at all phil hendry i think he's just a total blowhard loudmouth jerk basically and he might even agree (laughs) you would say that yeah that's kind of well what kind of what is he like He's a radio show host but he's also what what is he like um, what's the one guy he's like the the liberal, but like a lot of people like don't. Uh, he's got like the slick, slick back hair and stuff. Oh, Bill Maher. Bill Maher. Is he like a Bill Maher or something? Yeah, even worse than him, probably when it comes right but, down to it. Actually, is he, worse. Is he, is he yeah. like Democrat? I guess so. Yeah, although he, he claims to have voted for Bush. Skull and uh, Bones, forty-three <laughs> at, at one point or another. Yeah. But what does that even matter? So. Uh, he's a flip flopper, uh, yeah. so you know. But the whole thing with uh, he's a regressive. You know, the people. That's one thing I will say is people got to wake up in the sense of stop parroting what you know. The start stop using the terms and and catchphrases that are being given to us through the media. It's time to take a look at these things, these these terms, 
and uh, the phrases, the catch phrases that they catch you, right? So when you get drawn in without stopping and dissembling or dissecting, uh, deconstructing really what what's what's uh, out there on the table, and you know it's just important to not uh, like the war on drugs, for example, or the war on terror, or there's different terms that come up along the way that like this business lately of anti-Semitism. Well, for Christ's sakes, uh, most people don't even stop. They initially, what, what do you think of? Well, when most people hear anti-Semitism, they think hatred of Jews. Well, if that's what you mean, then say hatred of Jews or anti-Judaism or something like that. Don't say anti-Semitism because anyone who's looked at things knows that, that well, first of all, what is Semitism? You know, is it some kind of belief system or religion? And who are the Semites? And when you ask that question, you see that clearly it's it's a whole segment of people from the Middle East being Semites, including the Palestinians, ironically. So you want to stop being anti-Semitic, stop bombing the, the Palestinians. That would be yeah. a real step in the right direction. But yeah, uh, sure. it's a, something to look into for sure. Uh, and, and most speakers people in mainstream media don't stop to even talk about that so they just go with the talking points i guess that they're handed and what's considered to be pc and you're kind of right about the way that so many people these days look at how social media is with people tippy-toeing around not wanting to have their youtube channel demonetized or what have you have their facebook shut down or you name it but what we've done actually with pi radio podcast is we're still we still have our youtube channel in place we haven't they haven't taken any action against us we've taken we uh, what is the word exactly I'm, maybe we'll come back to me in a second here but uh we've we've taken the first step in saying okay fine we're going to put our stream out via d live uh and that we'll still have the kind of the the, the dummy uh promo end of things up on YouTube that people can see. But really, if you want to hear us, check out dlive.com forward slash WPRPN. That's where the live shows will be. And then BitChute is where we upload the raw feed content. So both of those outlets, thankfully, pretty much pro-free speech. And it's really ironic, too, because I've looked into things. Did you know that DLive, actually, they're silent partners, people that are backing them financially behind the scenes? who they are, it's really ironic, you know, especially within the context of free speech, or so we think, so we're told, uh, for the time being at least, it's communist fucking China, huh. man. It's, it's yeah. straight out of Beijing, <clears throat> the communist party of China is who is apparent, from what I understand, the the uh, the information that I've come across here, and that some people know about it or are talking about is, yeah, it's Beijing. So the, the the organ harvesters of the Falun Gong and those people who uh, aren't so keen on Tibet and and the Dalai Lama dare not mention his name. That's not PC in their country at all. So yeah. I just find it really ironic, well, though. I, 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 uh, I I did hear something. Uh, I, I, maybe I heard it on one of your uh, shows, or maybe I saw it somewhere else. But um, wasn't something just went down in. Um, in uh, Beijing, didn't it? Where like uh, they're trying to they're trying to pass a law to to make uh, something about the criminals uh, can be extradited into China proper now, in, like Beijing or do you know do you know anything? I don't I don't know that, that that's exactly what it is, but but you follow the news a lot. Do you know what I'm talking about? Hong Kong. Hong Kong, yeah, Hong, Hong not Beijing, yeah, yeah, Hong Kong. Major massive protests in Hong Kong. Yeah. I don't know if there's been anything in the last week or so, but there was. And uh, you think that the the authorities would get the message? And I'm not sure the name of the woman, but total technocrat, of course, as most of these people are. They're really the uh, they're the they're the problem, as I see it, frankly. And that you know, because I'm sort of I'm a reformer. I call for reform. Endlessly, and the question is, of course, well, where are we going to take the reform? What direction? I mean, Hitler was a reformer too. You got to remember, right? So, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, where are we going with this? Yeah. But uh, no, pretty much just pro-liberty reformer. Less is more, uh, especially when it comes to laws and just the intrusive nature of things. Did you know 
you hear the expression so often, ignorance is no, uh, ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, if that's the case, next time you walk into a, a legal library or just take a look at what they have on the shelves in these libraries, that the, the, the books, the, they, go, they go on forever. You know, there's countless texts and uh, it's, these places are quite huge, really, and significant, really massive uh, legal libraries. And you cannot tell me that all lawyers have read every one of those books and know them back to front, inside and out, line, chapter, and verse. I just don't buy that. So they say ignorance of the law is no excuse. I mean, really? What, you expect everyone, even us lay people, to know? Like, let, the lawyers, for the most, have no idea what's in a lot of these books, except for the one area where they specialize. And uh, what, are we, are we supposed to know more than the lawyers do? When a cop arrests you, see, they're taking you in, and then it's, it's up to the judge, really, based on what the, the cop, the, their story, what they're saying, if in fact anything is going to proceed or not. That's uh, with, with criminal charges. So it's all a bunch of bullshit, frankly, just so much. Uh, maybe getting a little off point here, but then again, maybe not circling back around to what we're talking about with respect to Hong Kong, that uh, communist China, authoritarian, totalitarian, just total social credit. Uh, it, it's a ubiquitous, that was a big word when I first got to Korea here years ago, 2002, 2003, ubiquitous, big, they're really pushing that hard. I haven't heard too much about that as of late for some reason, but uh, the CCTV cameras sure did get rolled out in, it didn't take long for them to be everywhere, ubiquitous, yeah. found, that's what the word means, just everywhere. So, uh, well, I, we're living, way. it's like George Orwell's you know, 1984, and then some right now. It's, you know, believe me, it really is. Because you can hardly go anywhere without being under surveillance in this country, which to me is like having a secret, like a secret, somebody from the secret yeah. police watching you every yeah, 10 yeah. feet. In America or uh, Korea? What, well, you, you said... You said both. Well, both, I suppose. But yeah. what the point is, partly, that these cameras all came into... Uh, they just were rolled out. You know, so some people making money off of it, of course from the yeah. sale of oh, these equipment, oh, yeah. from the maintenance, yeah. and then from the constant surveillance. You gotta have people there watching, and now they're in, trying to work in on implementing, integrating the biometric end of things. One of the reasons where, when I go outside, it, you, know, you can bet I have a, a, a nice big hat on, sunglasses if I can manage that, and an umbrella. So, uh, and then now they've got things down where it's, geez, well, we got to know what your heart rate is and how you walk, because we got that figured out too. So, you know, you're walking a certain well, way. So, uh, I once, know, I once saw, a, I once saw a video where these people, uh, they figured out a way to like confuse the surveillance systems. They'd put like a bunch of like crazy stickers or face doodads or some sort of shit on their face. And like, and it makes it to where like the surveillance systems can't recognize them. I don't know. Seems like an in inter interesting idea, but maybe you know, <laughs> might make you look, yeah. uh, you know, really crazy. But it came know. out just a couple months ago, and I don't know where the the the, the stickers were placed. Um, I'd have to go back and, and take a look at that. I don't know if they had umbrellas or not, but that would be another thing. I don't see. See, most people are just so compliant and complacent. They just don't even care. They're oblivious, like boiling frogs, you know? So it's this Fabian socialist agenda that has been in, they've been powers that be, the technocrats uh, right around the world. And then you have these, these secret societies, these fraternal orders working together hand in glove. And hey, we're just following the law on the surface of things, but well, behind the scenes, of course, they're engaging in, you know, God only knows what in order to have it so the the ends justify the means yeah. kind of deal. And uh, no, there's no doubt, like we are living right now in a 1984 kind of brave new world uh, synthesis dystopian world really is what it seems. And with a social credit system, that they're trying to 
implement now. That's definitely something to think about. But the more people are dumbed down and uh, have you know the fluoridated water and pharmaceuticals and and uh, look at the way the, the TV operates, for example, the the frequency vibration level, that sort of thing. It's all it's a full spectrum dominance agenda, which is a total military type term, and a lot of people forget as well too that all technologies first and foremost they are you know it's a they're developed and launched for uh pur for purposes of military application yeah. for and then after that mm -hmm. what is it like 20 30 years after they've had their 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 way with the technologies that finally the us the, the proles or however you want to put it the plebes i don't know we managed to get our hands on things through the through the uh, commercial market, basically. So uh, well, I don't know. Like... I don't have a, I don't have a spy phone. We got a landline here. That's it. No spy phones for for Jaffe. But uh, my wife, she's got one, and uh, we do the internet, of course, as you can probably tell. But that's the thing. Look, it's a question of voting and choosing rather than having these things. For, forced and foist upon ourselves. That's what really gets me. Where you, there's no there's no say in the matter. That's where I have a big problem philosophically. So <clears throat> it's a big issue in my well, mind. Well, I was gonna say you were talking about um, technology being like a military application. Was well, sort of like uh, remember the Hypnotoad in, in Futurama? Did you ever watch Futurama? The the, the Simpsons offshoot. That takes oh yeah. Future. Yeah. Sure. But there's mm -hmm. the there's the hypno toad on the television. It's basically just like a toad. It's just like, it's, it's just like a static image of a toad with like you know hypnotic eyes like you know hypnotizing you, and and, and everyone gets like brainwashed by it. So I, I just kind of soft disclosure, I guess, about television being used to program people. I guess. Yeah. Revelation of the math of the method, I guess, is what you could say of that as well too. Just they're kind of like it, throwing it right out there in your face. Yeah. Some people yeah. get it, and others just don't. Obviously. What? 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 And that that brought me. I mean, um, I think a lot about soft disclosure and <clears throat> TV and movies and stuff like that. And one that came to mind is that, um, which I think I I mentioned maybe. When you interviewed me for for Pirate Radio Network, uh, that I used to be like a really big X Files fan, and there was one episode that uh, I thought was like soft disclosure about about microchips. It's where um, with the Walter Skinner character, he gets infected by this like nanobot virus or something, and like Crychek, who's one of the villains in the show, he basically can for the episode he can, he, he can basically make Skinner sick and well again at, at the push of a button because he's infected with this like device and it kind of reminded me of like the microchips you know the microchips that they're trying to install in everybody it's like well you know obviously it's going to be used for like commerce and stuff so you can fucking you know buy a soda just by like scanning your wrist or some shit but, but who's to say it wouldn't be used to like you know, target people and like make them sick and well again at the drop of a hat, you know what I mean? I don't know. Something that crossed my mind. Oh yeah, you look, look at 5G. You know, that's yeah. uh, big time. I think it's what's known as scalar weaponry or like Tesla technology. And uh, that's, a, that's a really important thing for people. You know, there's a little bit of pushback that's taking place right now, but uh, it's just unfortunate that there's so many people who don't really care, I suppose, or are just completely oblivious, they're apathetic, they maybe live in fear, <laughs> you know? But for me, it's like, well, geez, if I, if I don't speak out and if I don't take a stand and I don't become engaged, that's a major problem because, you know, when I leave this world, I don't want to look back and, uh, think that my life has been a total waste of course and I haven't done the right things or I haven't yeah. at least tried to speak out when I did have the opportunity to, 
to say something. So, uh, yeah, canary in the coal mine, man, and we'll see. There's, 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 it's great to see. It's refreshing to see, like throughminds.com, which I know you mentioned earlier, and yeah. uh, just other places via social media that there are people that are kind of woke, and I think that is a bit of a threat to the powers that be as well too. They don't really like that idea because they want a more passive, submissive public that just the who will just quietly go along with everything they uh, they so desire. Uh, but what can you really do? So, you know, with respect to conspiracies, it's really interesting because just think of the ones that have been revealed and that we know about. What about the ones that are out there that we have no, that we're not still not sure about or we haven't even heard about, you know? We haven't broke through to... Uh, nobody's even investigated or reported on them to this point that's what i always get a kick out of you know so and of course with, with the way these things work conspiracies that uh and first of all it's interesting if you look at the way the word is spelled con cons and then piracy so uh, the word itself just means breathing together and uh what the I just piracy get a, does Pardon me? What word? Piracy? Cons. Cons. Con. Piracy. Yeah. Oh, cons. Pi cons. Piracy. Well, you know, like ins inspire or pre prespire. Like, it's yeah. breathing, right? So, if you think about it, you do have with the pirates on the ship, they are all, they're living together. They're all breathing together and everything yeah. else, of course, too, right? So, yeah. uh, but, I don't know. There's just so many... Because, first of all, when you are conspiring, you don't want anybody to know about it. So you can just imagine when there are people uh, who persistently deny conspiracies or or just want to play the reality of them down. Uh, you know, skeptical to the point where it just doesn't make any sense anymore. It's like, why are you, can't, can you not see what's going on here? <laughs> you know, or, or not. Yeah. Some people just refuse to... Uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's either they're in on it or they're just maybe just ignorant uh, or they're just, they're afraid to even discuss the, these matters. The fact that uh, people sometimes do get up to, you know, the things that they get up to are, well, you know, a lot of times, you know, you can have a conspiracy to plan a surprise birthday party, right? Nobody gets yeah. hurt or anything, but it is a conspiracy, so it's kept secret up until a point. And uh, the Manhattan Project, too, I, people have talked about as an example, because the skeptics will say, oh, well, or the sort of the debunkers, you know, that, oh, how could this possibly happen? The, I think it's the Manhattan Project, which had to do with the building of the first uh, new, new, ner, neuron bombs or hydrogen bombs or nuclear bombs, something along those lines, put in, devising some way to basically kill a lot of people real fast. Dropping, it ended up going what what was uh, what occurred in Japan, Nagasaki, Hiroshima, that sort of deal. So, but they kept that secret for a long time, and there were quite a few people working on the project. So. Uh, that's a good example of how things can be done. Look at Area 51. A lot of talk there as well, too, where you've got some super top secret high-level security clearances necessary for you to to uh, you know, to be part of whatever activities are taking place there out in the deserts of, what is it? I'm not sure what part of Nevada exactly, but... Uh, you know, definitely something to reflect upon. So there's something else I was going to mention, too. Uh, I'm just kind of uh, freewheeling right now, shooting from the hip, as what? probably you and some of the listeners can pick up on. Well, well, you know something I do if, uh, if I'm trying to remember something <clears throat> while, like, someone's, like, talking or something, I just uh, open up Notepad on the computer yeah. and just write down a few notes that give me the just idea of what I wanted to like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. There you go. That's right. Yeah. 
or, or not. I just sometimes I don't even bother just <laughs> yeah. because it's it's not really a problem. I'll come back to it later. It had yeah. something to do with the uh, with the nuclear end of things and the whole conspiratorial. Oh, I know what I was going to say. There, see, there we go. It doesn't take. I may be getting on in years, but thankfully, you know, I'm able to circle back to what it was that I'd set aside for the moment. Yeah. Dresden, the bombing. <clears throat> The Allies, like a so-called Allies, the aerial bombardment of Germany, Dresden is one example, Hamburg was another, but they totally just annihilated, wiped both of those cities pretty much right off the face of the earth. And the uh, the Dresden bombing, I think it was, is it Dresden or, well, it, no, was it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Dresden that you know, there was a lot of devastation, of course. People died in the most horrific way uh, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, 1945. But as bad as that was, it was nowhere near as, as catastrophic as what occurred over in Dresden, which found the number of casualties who uh, people who lost their lives as a result of the bombings were... Uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined even even more than apparently even more than Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined uh, the number of people who lost their lives in Dresden was just it was right off the scales so right off right off the charts and something I think people need to uh, really we we need to think about a little more reflect upon and ask ourselves why are these matters not even discussed in history classes, high school history classes. I don't know if you've taken any university history classes or not, but they probably talk about these matters there a little bit. But <clears throat> I mean, things like Eisenhower's death camps, we always see it's endless talk about the Holocaust, the Holocaust. Well, first, yeah. my question is which Holocaust? <laughs> right. It's like for right. me, it's like, well, the, yeah, I mean, there was a Holocaust, all right. It was called World War II. And there was about, yeah. what, 50, 60 million people that died. So endlessly hearing about, oh, well, oh, the Jewish Holocaust. Okay, well, how many people? Well, six million. It's a magical six million figure for some reason. It's like, okay, okay, yeah. fine. We can agree to whatever you want, six million. I don't really believe that, of course. But if you if that's what people want to say, fine, go, go ahead. It's, uh, what happens if you say seven? Or is that going to cause a problem? Or what if you said, oh, and no, it was really 10 million? Or, or two, does it matter if it's two million or three million or, or less? I think it was probably, who knows how many exactly, maybe 1.5. There's a lot of people, okay, under various circumstances, including execution, uh, just firing squads, basically. So uh, the point is, though, just, yeah, the larger Holocaust being the war itself. Of course, we don't hear much about that, though. We always hear, oh, the poor Jews, you know, the poor, which... Of course, yeah, they suffered, and it was terrible. That's, that we can, uh, I think, all agree to that. But why do we not hear about the other? Uh, that's what they call it, actually, Eisenhower's death camps. There's the only one of the few books that's ever been written regarding the whole matter is something that it's called Other Losses. And yet, at the same time, there was upwards of around maybe 2 million Germans in those death camps. Something just a re really pretty extraordinary figure because of General Eisenhower and his orders and uh, these German people that had been detained, mostly I think soldiers largely, but they had they had no means of, uh, it, it was, they were totally, uh, ne the, what, the elements, nature, they had no means of uh, shielding themselves or protecting themselves with, with any tarpaulin, I guess, or any way of uh, providing, maybe making a fire and providing heat for themselves. Really cold at that particular time. I guess it was in something like, geez, the, it was in the going into the winter months as well, too. So uh, not much to eat. I think a number of you know, people, if they didn't uh, die from exposure to the elements, then they had, they had uh, there was not enough food that they were being able to access there either. So uh, I guess the point here being is this, that there's so much history that takes place that we just never hear about. But at the same time, there's other other events that it seems like through Holly Weird 
and yeah. mainstream media and, and other academia that they want to keep just repeating uh, endlessly berating us with these talking points and just different issues and events they think we should know about not telling us about these other matters that took place which I think it would be really valuable for us to have you know a little more education on as well too so uh, that's about it that's all I really want to say as far as yeah the death the death toll casualty number with the bombing of, of Dresden and uh, Hamburg and there's other German cities too so well, this is something I've been getting into lately I've been checking out and yeah. would recommend anyone if they're interested download those World War II audiobooks that are you know available get them while you can via YouTube so uh, that's the way to do it and see what the authors have have uh, recorded and put forward there in, what, in their books what wasn't there a, a clash song about the Dresden bombings or something I remember Jeez, I, yeah the, the guns of Brixton out. Yeah, maybe maybe I'm thinking of that. I, I, mean, I thought it was like the, the bombs of Dresden or something. It's a similar name. I, yeah. I think, I think, I'm thinking of Guns of Brixton. But that, that, that's about something different, isn't it? Or is that, is that the same thing? I have no idea. I wish I was yeah. more of a uh, diehard Clash fan. I, I will listen to their music whenever it comes on. I know I won't turn it well, off. Or well, anything, I'm, not but... like, I'm not like a diehard fan either. I, I have a few friends who are like really hardcore into them. I, I like some London stuff. Calling. Like, maybe yeah. it's London Calling. You know, how about yeah, that one? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Title, title, cut there. So, speaking of which, we're supposed to be getting together here and doing. Uh, you're gonna hopefully be helping me out with this upcoming Minds World Indie Music sh Music Showcase, our fifth installment, and uh, coming on air as we live stream through D Live, and just pretty much wing it. It's, you know, queuing up the songs and. We'll mute ourselves where the music is playing, of course, and talk a little bit about the artists uh, in between the songs and just kind of do our best to to set the mood and to let yeah. listeners get get listeners so they're clear on who it is, the artists they're listening to. And maybe, uh, you know, if we get a chance to actually bring any of the musicians on board for a quick little chat that'd be great like a pre-record thing or whatever so do you already have uh the musician the musicians in mind i mean yeah we can get a few we got a few lined up well we need more we need more for sure we're always need um, more um yeah I, I know a few on mines uh there's a guy to them. yeah yeah there's a guy who goes by tough taco that, that that's not the name of his band it, it, his, his band's called something else um Actually, so, I think he lives in West Virginia too, ironically. But he lives mm -hmm. like in a different part of West Virginia. But uh, uh, there's a few others, but I think some of them on mines don't. Uh, they don't get on mines very often. I, I have I have some other friends who aren't on mines, but I don't know if they'd want to. I don't know if they'd want to come on board or not. But uh, um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, sounds, is it going to be like a pretty similar format to the one that you did back in like February or October or whatever? I, I know it was on one of them, but I think I was just there and, you know, and talking on the, uh, on like the chat, super chat or whatever. Yeah, I think a pretty similar kind of deal, only... It's just for me. It's a bit of a challenge if I'm having to do a total one-man show. I'd really rather not, frankly. I'd really rather work together with other people if I can manage that. It's just not always that easy to coordinate. And sometimes people, I know you've uh, expressed an interest, and that's what we're sort of running with at yeah. this particular mm -hmm. moment. But uh, you know, some people are just sort of, I don't know. People are flaky sometimes, yeah. you know, and others other times when they commit, they're on board and they're totally gung ho, and um, we'll just have to see how it goes. I, my, our main thing is promoting indie music. That's all we want to do. We want people, uh, if you have a Minds channel and if you have quality music that you've recorded and it's in tune and it you got your it follows a bit of a beat. <laughs> You've got a certain arrangement to things with you know yeah. bridge, chorus, whatever, well, and you well, can my, have my, my stuff uh -huh. isn't my stuff is in tune about half the time. <laughs> the other half the time I might be in some alternate sonic youth tuning or something. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. 
but you notice like we we'll we'll go through your people's music and i guess i i've been elected to make these sort of uh executive type decisions uh for the most part, I mean, in working together in conjunction, collaborating with, with others, of course, what they have to say, uh, the artists themselves, if they recommend a song, we'll definitely give it a listen and put it up, you know, give it a, uh, make it a priority. Although sometimes we might run with something else if it happens to catch our ear. But I've been around music long enough that I think I got a pretty good sense of what is a decent song and what maybe others might enjoy listening to. Hopefully, you know, within uh, and the kind of kind of stuff that you put out is really kind of cool, actually, because it's different than Thanks, most of what I've heard in the past. And uh, I don't know, I, I get a kick out of it. I enjoy it. And it's we're we're, we're open to any kind of independent uh, online minds dot com underground musical productions people have on uh, have put together and uploaded. That's all myself. Uh, I've done a little bit of recording over the years too, and I mean, you couldn't get more underground than what I've got because uh, if you want to access my tunes, sometimes you can do it for free, but otherwise, send me 10 bucks and you'll get 10 songs that I will personally select and and send your way for your listening pleasure. So, I mean, 10 cool. songs, 10 bucks, that's the way it works. And Watch just how that's, through, that's uh, mm -hmm. Fugazi used to do a similar thing with their shows they wouldn't charge more than like 10 bucks for a show pretty much every show they ever played i don't know who's that was Fuga it fugazi never heard of them uh they're like uh i guess they're kind of like post hardcore band sure from like the 80s 90s right something like that okay yeah, kind of sure underground but uh as far as underground bands are, pretty, are concerned, they're they're kind of well known, I guess. But uh, it's like alternative rock, basically. Uh, yeah, right on. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the grunge, that whole grunge scene out of Seattle in the '90s. I was never really, I was never really uh, somebody that got drawn into it all. Frankly, Nirvana, yeah. Pearl Jam. I uh, I don't know, man. It's like any time I see something that goes mainstream and that these these uh, uh, you know w what is it Madison Avenue type people get together and try to turn and, and sell to the masses that I generally I, I take a step back or I just uh, I hesitate and, and wait and really analyze the situation, look at things and. And I mean, look at, I mean, for Kurt Cobain, like I'll listen to all the old Nirvana stuff and everything, but I mean, the whole scene, like people that worship the guy, some kind of her uh, hero or something. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he had some pretty, I mean, he might have been something of a musical talent. Okay, fine. But uh, I mean, on, his more... personal life was just off the rails. Well, some of it, but that, that, I mean, um, most rock stars have some degree of that going on. But 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 uh, I'm a proponent of of the theory that uh, Courtney Love killed him. I think that's pretty. Oh. Yeah. I think You're not pretty, alone. You're not yeah. alone. Did you see the movie uh, Kurt and Courtney? Yeah, or, a yeah, long, yeah, long, yeah, yeah, long yeah. time ago. Yeah. And who was that guy? He, like, who was the guy? The the you know, speaking of alternative underground, he was a total like sadomasochist kind of guy with the executioner's hood. What the hell was his name now? Anyways, do you know that? There was the BBC interviewer, the guy that put the, sh the movie together, Kurt and Courtney, and he could he was not able to get an interview with Courtney. She just brought, blew, blew him right off. But uh, yeah. when he talked to this, this guy, El Duce, I think his name was, maybe something like that, and he just he, he was really hardcore. It's a really, you look at the way, uh, just degrading towards women and having like women on leashes and stuff on <laughs> stage, and and there all these guys are like, you know, they sure. have their heads covered da, 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 we're dark da, 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 da. Right. like you know screaming into the mic yeah. and which for me that doesn't really go that doesn't really work in a big way it's, it has its appeal to some I guess and yeah. but you know I mean I'm at the age now where I think a lot of people they do tend to grow up and grow out of certain phases of their lives but going back to this character El Duce on that movie the, in, the guy from the BBC he interviewed him 
And uh, he said what he said straight up on the record, recording saying that Courtney had reached out to him personally, tried to recruit him, saying, you know, for ten grand, uh, I, I want to get, I'll give you ten grand to you and join and, and blow his head off with a shotgun or something like that. I think was what he how he phrased it, and he turned he he turned her down. And what he said right as he was leaving, though, and they were breaking off the interviews, he said, you, 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 you buy me a beer or something like that, and, uh, you know, well, maybe I'll tell you, I'll even tell you a little more kind of, kind of deal. So yeah. that was really something where, as a journalist, I definitely would have pressed him on that. You know, I would have gone, I would have said, all right, what more do you got to hear about it? But the fact of the matter is that, I don't know if you heard or not, but that guy was dead within two days of that interview. They found him. They found him, uh, yeah, I his body, yeah, his yeah. body had, I think that was his name, his body, he, it was totally, he'd been hit by a train right out on the tracks, and how he got there is anybody's guess, of course, so, that sounds sort I mean, of, wow, that, that sounds a little bit like how Isaac Cappy died, you know, you yeah, know Isaac Cappy, yeah. Not, yeah, he, he didn't die by a train, oh. but he died, you know, he supposedly got hit by a car, he, Jump yeah. on the bridge or something. I right. Know. I was yeah. watching a lot of that Phoenix Enigma coverage of that. He's been well, covering it pretty extensively. Who, uh, Isaac Cappy? Uh, Phoenix Enigma. This uh, this guy, he has a YouTube channel. Um, it's pretty interesting. He, he goes into... He likes to go into a lot of, like... Of the occult symbolism of certain events and stuff. And sacred numerology and he's really into that sort of stuff and and he was trying to relate it you know saying that there's all these numerical lining ups and all this uh you know um astrological significance and all of this that and the other to like isaac cappy's death and stuff i don't know you, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt but but it's pretty interesting you know he would probably he, he would probably analyze Kurt Cobain's death and, or pretty much any important you know death in, in a similar fashion. Yeah, it's a some I think it starts with a G, Ger, Germania, Ger, Germanic, some sort of astrological as you're saying, uh, like an alphabet or code, and has I think it has Judaic roots if I'm not mistaken. But he's also if I think about it, know the guy you're talking about he also talked about bob dylan uh being sacrificed uh like last year and, and he bob, was not bob he was still alive. obviously did not die so <laughs> yeah. he was off base with that here's the well, thing unless, hits, unless, hits, unless hits and misses clone. man hits and misses well unless he's a clone <laughs> well that, that could be too i suppose you know yeah. hits and misses with this whole business the mediums and psychic so-called mind readers or mentalists that's really what it all boils down to that uh there's uh certain times where they're on they've 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 you know they're on point and what they're putting forward is uh it's legit genuine and for whatever reason comes about you know it manifests itself as predicted and then there's other times where it just is not it totally it fizzles and uh nothing occurs whatsoever like Kreskin was the example that came to mind I don't know if you know him or not the old mentalist guy who who said he told Art Bell and his listeners that on a particular date uh, UFOs would reveal themselves over the deserts of uh, southern Nevada or something like that I believe yeah. is where it was the location it never came about uh, and uh, <laughs> Art Bell really lost it man he really just got pissed off and <laughs> told Kreskin that he never wanted to have him back on a show again and it was quite hilarious actually the, the reaction real classic stuff so uh, you know I think it's all something just to yeah, laugh about and you know what can you really say so there has been times see Kreskin can what he can do with his hypnotic powers some people of course as you probably wear are susceptible to hypnosis others uh, are not uh, but what he, he's done in the past with people that have participated in his shows is he's hypnotized them to the point where they're convinced, you know, they're seeing certain things that are not there. Everybody else that's yeah. watching, not hypnotized, clearly sees that. Well, was, well I mean, uh, th that reminds me, uh, again, to, I hope it don't sound like a broken record, but, but there's certain shows 
out there like X Files, where there's a lot of like soft. I mean, go figure. You would find a lot of soft disclosure in X Files. Of course, there's probably going to be some disinformation in there too. But, but I mean, y you know. But um, what you what you just said reminded me of um, there's one episode where uh, I think it's called Jose Chuns from Outer Space, where like the the government abducts these these kids and try to like hypnotize them into thinking they're aliens. I mean, that's not to say. I mean, there could there could be real aliens too, but but in the case of this particular episode, they were trying to convince them that uh, you know they had been abducted by aliens or something. I Check this out, man. I got a couple of UFO and alien stories to share with you. Yeah. One is a little kind of iffy, but the second one, my dad told me, and I've actually blogged about it. I've got it up there. It's, you just type in Medium Jaffe because Medium.com is where people they they leave their blogs and stories and that sort of thing. I haven't used it in the longest time, just too busy with other things, mostly the show and feeling kind of, tell you the God's honest truth, in a lot of ways quite burnt out and uh, having, it's kind of to the point where, look, we're producing two shows a week now, Tuesday nights, 9, yeah. uh, 8 p.m. in the West, it's the news segment, and that runs for like close to it's three hours now yeah, of I could, conversation. I, could, I couldn't do that. Yeah, that'd be too much for me. But Friday but, nights. Friday nights we got the featured uh, show, but uh, if do you want to hear the UFO and alien stories, so I can yeah, kind of sure. get out there. I know we got to we're kind of maybe on the near the one yeah. hour mark here. Yeah, we, um, we I'll probably soon, but. yeah because also I need to make sure there's enough space on my recorder anyway. So we'll, we'll probably I was gonna say we'll probably end it here in a little bit, but yeah. So go, go ahead. Okay, so the alien stories. Once when I was in university, I was so friggin' high, man. I just, this weed, I don't know what it was. Yeah. But it might have been sprayed with PCP or who knows what the hell the right. deal was. I was so high that I was actually convinced my, uh, what kind of landlord roommate sort of buddy uh, was shape shifting. And oh, yeah. I, the thing is, I'm still not sure if that actually occurred or not, if he really did shape shift or not. But here's what's really the kicker is that his father was actually the worshipful grand master of our local Masonic. People call it oh, temple, shit. but it's really, it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, lodge, but it's a temple. And they, 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 for some reason, you hear it just repeatedly, oh, we're not a religion. It's not a religion. Oh, repeat. Yeah. Like they will never, not one, maybe a former, or somebody that's, that's no longer uh, a part of their fraternity, or one of the, the brothers, I guess, they'll see things a little differently. But I mean, you look at the way that they've got their rites and rituals, and they have the books that they read from. And everything is scripted. They even go through theatrical, I'm not sure what they're called exactly, but where you, uh, it's just a little theatrical kind of role playing of, with, who is it, the, the Hiram Abiff and these, these, the past, whatever, grandmasters and the way that uh, Freemasonry, its roots and origins, what, 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 you know where they find themselves and what they're based out of but the role playing i guess is the best way i could put it really just uh fortunately the word's not coming to me there's descriptive language the best most insightful language at this particular moment but so that's what happened i was so freaking high and i swear to god at the time he was shape-shifting in the bathroom it was really just kind of weird it only happened for a couple seconds where he's very like rep, rep, reptilian frankly so i still don't know to this day whether that was uh real a phenomenon or not but it was really bizarre what anyways that aside and then i had another one let me just i'll say where my father this is interesting now and i got a blog medium type in medium.com or just jaffe medium two keywords work duck duck go and it'll come up the blog where it talks about i think it's close encounters of the something or another kind i haven't seen it in a while it sounds like you might be doing that there in the background yourself familiar with, with how the medium.com uh, how that whole platform works basically just for blogging more or less but my dad if do you want me to get into the story of what happened with this his sighting is this post encounter kind of deal or go ahead what do you think oh really simply they were heading out to have a, a hot dog roast around the campfire and just getting ready to get things together out in the, the front yard uh, and they're kind of in like a somewhat isolated rural location kind of farm 
uh, farm type properties uh, throughout the area, more or less. Really beautiful yeah. place that he had there back in the day. So, but anyways, what he did was he looked up, he just had his attention drawn for some reason to the horizons off in the distance. Some, I think it was like off in the, the, the southeast or something like that. Anyways, this, this slit appeared fr from out of the sky, just along the, the horizon. And there's a beam of light that came out of it, so the story goes. <laughs> and uh, from there, there was a sort of, a, it was a, a gradually this, this uh, object slowly made its way toward them and hovered over the barn for a couple minutes. It turned out to be this giant fiery sea type uh, symbol, I guess. Wouldn't call it a craft necessarily, some sort of phenomenon, which is inexplicable. Although I'll, it's interesting because the newspaper, I'll tell you in just a moment here what the newspaper had to say regarding this whole business in just a few moments. But so he, he was really blown away by the whole thing, as you can imagine. You hear stories about people just kind of losing it in whatever way when they see these things being frozen totally just yeah. what what would you do but he was he was uh, quite blown away by the whole thing kind of like a semi quasi religious experience yeah. almost and he was putting his arms out in supplication is how I like to put it towards the object walking slowly towards it and stopped a reasonable distance maybe like uh, 50 100 yards away from it and this thing was big too hovering over the barn uh, it was like like a hundred feet tall approximately and quite wide as well too a giant fiery sea I forget I was asking about him asking him about the sound did it sizzle or make any sound did it smell that sort of thing anything else you remember so uh, and then after just a couple minutes of it being there it off and went back to where it originated from, off in the distance along the horizon. That slit again once again in the sky. Just Sound, gone. Yeah, it sounds just, like just, just a, like that. Sounds like a portal opened up like well, a yeah. 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 But but he wasn't alone. He was with my stepmother and my sister. I asked my sister, stepmother's long been since out of the picture, but my sister, I asked her about it and she claimed to have no memory of this business whatsoever. She might, which she might have blocked thought, it out. She, it might, it might have been blocked out of her memory. Yeah, I find that quite peculiar because it's not like it's the sort of thing that you have happen to you on an everyday routine kind of basis. So once a life, once in a lifetime experience for the people who are well, fortunate that, enough to have it occur or unfortunate, depending on how you see yeah, things. But let me yeah. just, I'll finish the story by oh, saying okay. that later the later in the following week in the newspaper they reported on it saying oh by the way if anyone has seen these aerial phenomena of lights and and uh, uh, this sort of thing in taking place in the sky don't worry it's just the military setting off uh, these uh, f it's not freon ray rayon or some some kind of chemical canisters they're shooting off into the air as part of a routine uh, military exercise yeah <laughs> <laughs> for fuck's yeah. sakes, it's like, you know, these, these uh, swamp gas stories have not got any better in, what, what, 50, 60 years? It's the same old swamp gas bullshit, isn't it? You know, that's their official story. And this, this happened to a few people where they saw these, this kind of strange phenomenon. So that particular region, this is up in British Columbia, too, the western part of Canada, there's a lot of activity, especially the, cent especially the central part of British Columbia for some strange reason. I, I don't know. I heard a story as... Well, there's a couple of other UFO stories I could share with you, but I'll leave it at that. Some weird things going on in different places, for sure, that are just really quite strange well, and inexplicable. Well, that more Phoenix, or less. that Phoenix Enigma guy, he lives out in um, uh, Arizona, and he says the superstitious the area near the superstitious mountains has a lot of strange activity going on, like reports of portals opening up and like strange beings stepping out and people going missing and sometime and I guess some of the natives in the area will say that you know if you're walking if you're hanging out in nature preferably with with people you know and and you you look down the tire shoes or something and you look up and like everything's like changed and like something seems like it's like shifting out of balance with like reality or something to, to like just stay put 
and like don't move and just wait for things to like realign themselves because if you step off into that, you know, God knows what, you might be gone out of this dimension forever. So it's like there's a lot of crazy shit out there. We, we could probably talk endlessly about all this, this endless paranormal stuff, but but yeah, I should probably uh, um, finish up here on the on the podcast because it is getting past the uh, it's getting about uh, about 70 minutes in. Uh, but I did I did want to mention um, one thing. Um, it's, it's really really synchronous. Um, I. I downloaded an audiobook of the Dharma Bums <laughs> uh, a few years ago, but I never listened to it, Jack Kerouac. Um, and one of the main characters in there is named Jaffe Ryder. Was was that, were you, were you named after him or? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, my mom was a big fan. Yeah. And uh, she married a writer, so they had a kid and they figured, well, Dad was more of a redneck than yeah. anything really, but yeah, my mom, kind of a flower child type character, I guess. Don't ever, don't ask me how they ever managed to get together, but they did. So I guess that sort of thing did happen back in the day. Yeah, not too many people ask me about that, but that's the deal. Yeah. That's oh, that's just, my story, I'm sticking just, to it. I just thought uh, that was a weird synchronicity because I, I yeah, just a lot of started don't listening know. to that audio book. I'm actually still in the process of listening to it. I just, I just thought that was weird. <laughs> So Here I am, <laughs> off in the east too, right? Yeah, yeah, with the uh, body sought the, yeah, well, hanging out with, that's, um, mm-hmm. hanging out with uh, Rex or Ray or whatever it is, <laughs> climbing, climbing old uh, Matterhorn. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a good, it's a and good actually, book. It's a good book, actually. It is. Yeah, yeah it's it's, a good his, book. it's one of his best, I think. Definitely. He uh, Kerouac really lost it in his. You know, the drinking just got too out of hand, and he became, I think, almost like a babbling fool, really. In the end, a real yeah. sad, sad state of affairs. So the fame end of things he did not handle very well either, I guess. I had a lot of people that were wanting to, you know how it is with, with fame, of course, is uh, for the no <laughs> people that wouldn't have had anything to do with you in the past suddenly want to be your, want to be your friend for some strange reason. So... You, you know, it's like you've won the lottery kind of deal. And, uh, that's uh, most people tend they they see through that. I guess if if they're lucky, they're able to see through that and keep their distance. But yeah, great book and uh, and a, and a great character. So, uh, but thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And yeah, no, you know, it's this, good to make yeah. it happen. Uh, do you mind if, it, if I keep in that part about the on the road and do you care? No, go ahead. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I just, I, I just, just wondered if there's way to go, man. Like that. you're one of the few people that's <laughs> actually uh, clued into that or picked up on that. A lot of people okay. they just have no idea about the, the context of things. I, I didn't. I, I I had. I just thought it was an interesting name. I I had no idea until I just started just by pure chance listening to that audio book and I was just like, that's that's so strange. My my, my when was that? My, when did you start listening to it? Just, just like a week ago. Weird, man. And so you never heard of it well, before? Well, I, 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 see, I knew Kerouac. I mean, I read On the Road a long time ago and one of his other novels. But then I, I listened to a lot of audiobooks on Audible and I just downloaded, I bought the Dharma Bums a few years ago, but I never ended up listening to it for some reason. And then I was like, until well, last I, week. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been more on like a Philip K. Dick type shtick. And I, and I actually yeah. also, I actually also, <laughs> I was curious, so I actually uh, bought one of the one of the audio books of the Bible to check it out and analyze it and stuff like that. And, you know, so uh, but but I but, but I've also been like on a big like Philip K. Dick like uh, uh, Philip K. Dick um, zone or something. I don't know. I've been I've been listening to a lot of Philip K. Dick books, like Scanner Darkly and Clans of the Alpine clan or something and several others but but then but then i was looking for something else to listen to and i was like oh yeah i never listened to dharma bums and i was just like pleasantly pleasantly surprised to see the main character was named jaffy Ryder. i just thought it was like so so odd do androids dream of sheep you know the yeah, you know, uh, what's, uh, that was the original uh, name electric sheep 
Oh, it, it, it wasn't electric sheep? It's, it's meant to be sheep? Yeah, I'll kill it, dude. Androids dream of electric sheep. And what is the... What, it became a movie. Famous movie. Blade Runner? Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah, Philip K. Dick, what a character. And it's always interesting having any kind of conversation you know, regarding him, of course, because he was such an interesting person. Yeah, definitely. But we'll yeah, just have to save that for another time. Yeah. So I just want to just remind your listeners to check out WPRPN.com. We're always looking for new guests, new story ideas. Uh, we're always looking for new people to come by and and engage themselves, be a part of, you know, WPRPN. It is it's what we call the People's Pirate Network. So there's a reason for that. And the more that people are interested in being a part of things, the more that it's going to actually grow and come to life. So, uh, you know, often people say, what's in it for me? Well, it's whatever you put into it, basically. It's the way it works. I'm very kind of karmic cosmic level so uh and i don't know what else to say really other than just thanks for having me and maybe we can do something again sometime we'll, we'll have you back on our show hopefully here before too long including the upcoming minds world indie music showcase in mid i think it's july 19th if i'm mistaken so yeah 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 uh, for sure and uh we'll probably have you back on on here at some point too I, i'd like to continue actually starting to have guests on the podcast kind of like helps helps it go a lot more swimmingly or I, I don't know just easier that way I don't feel like, feel like I have to, have to do everything myself because that, that's a pain in the ass but uh, um, yeah it was it was a nice chatting with you um, it was a pretty interesting conversation and I guess one, la what, yeah, one last thing I'll just say is that with the, the time of our shows too in case people forget 8pm Pacific Standard Time 11 out on the East Coast, Tuesdays and Friday nights. First, we have the news show on Tuesdays. Friday is the feature guest spot. That's 12 p.m. noon here in Asia, Tokyo, and Seoul. Thanks once again, Mr. Zylan Roberts. Very much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, no problem. All right, all right. thanks, Jaffe. Hello, this is Sanjay the Guru saying Happy Independence Day and hope that... Uh, all of you have a big fireworks display and hope nobody uh, uh, nobody blows their dick off of a firework because that would be very unpleasant. Because then you'd have to basically make your blown off dick into a, a makeshift pussy and that, that's not good for anybody. And that's not good. Um, but I'd like to say this is the end of the podcast and to end it off, I'm going to showcase a, uh, a little um, improvised freak folk song that I did the other day, which actually the end of it ties into something I was talking about earlier uh, in the podcast. And uh, I don't want to kill the this, this surprise, I'll just let you hear it, but basically um, it was an improvised freak folk uh, type song, psych folk type song, that I did the other day over the weekend. Um, called Mark of the Bees, okay? And, um, anyway, uh, it's a good song. I, it's got a little bit of guitar, a 12 string guitar, and it's got, um, a little bit of percussion and vocals. It's just a good thing. An improvised, uh, song. So, that's how we're going to leave off with this gentle song. Uh, and I hope you have a good night and a good holiday. And, uh, see you later, bitches! Thank you! One and a two and a one, two, three, four.
Hey, what up, my niggas? Duck Bill Hickok here. And if you enjoyed that video slash podcast slash music extra- extravaganza, extravaganza, whatever the hell it was, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's your words, man. Your words, your choice. Yeah. Anyway, if you enjoyed that shit, why don't you subscribe right here where my hands are doing this thing? And right up here is another video. Uh, It's either going to be another one of these podcasts, or maybe I'll psych you out. Maybe it'll be a maybe it'll be a song video, a music video, or maybe it'll be one of my old my old uh, fucking skit videos I used to do before I started focusing on the podcasts. And right here is going to be something similar to that. All right. See you later, bitches. Me so sorry. Me so sorry. Me so sorry. Thank you, bitches.